Alrighty tubers, today we've got a Husqvarna 51. What we're going to be doing on this guy today is getting it running. It's been sitting a very long time. I tried putting some fuel in it and no start. Your usual issue when something sits around for a long time. Sometimes you can clean the carburetors out and get them running again. Sometimes the carburetors are just too far gone. When that happens, we need to find a new carburetor. Today's carburetor comes from a company called HIPA or HIPA, H I P A. They sent me a new carburetor, a tune up kit which comes with new air filter, which will replace that guy new fuel filter, new spark plug, and in the bottom new fuel line and new gasket for the carburetor. So today we're going to install the new carburetor, get some fresh fuel in this guy and get it running again. We're going to go ahead and do all of that and then we will be replacing the pull string on this chainsaw as well due to it looking pretty worn and not retracting all the way so let's get to it first we're going to start off by popping this case apart i'm going to need a flathead screwdriver for that could possibly also do it with a pair of pliers you just pry it between the two pieces of the case there there's the old air filter. We're going to need some Torx, not Torx, but Allen head. All the links to these products will be in the description. A little chilly in the workshop today. I had the heater running for a little bit before the start of the video a little cold. It is 50 degrees in here. Not crazy cold, but definitely not warm. <laughs> Go ahead and take these guys out. Set them to the side. Fuel line comes out of the tab in the bottom. Carburetor is coming off with everything. There's your choke handle. That will release the carburetor. There we go. There's your air filter housing. There's a new one that came with the new air filter. So if yours is damaged or you just feel like replacing it, sometimes after time these will get warped from the heat. So I'm going to go ahead and remove choke lever there. It goes in this direction when it goes back on. Take the fuel line off there. There's your throttle lever. Again, it goes in this direction when it goes back on. This is a pretty simple job. It really is. So carburetor's off. There's really nothing more to this that we need. So we can go ahead and set the old carburetor off to the side. We can also take a look at the old one and the new one side by side here. Look like a match to me. Yep. All right, so next step, we're gonna be replacing this fuel line Fuel line doesn't look all too bad, but we've got new stuff, might as well use it. I'd hate to be out on the job and have that break just because I didn't replace it. First thing we've got to do is drain out all the old fuel. This thing's been sitting a while, so I will not be saving this fuel. It will be properly disposed of. Get 
Just a simple drain pan. Tell you what, that pull string's starting to bother me. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take that pull string off real quick so we don't go dipping it in our fuel. There we go. That guy's out of the way. Put these guys off to the side. Alright, so we're going to take a pair of pliers. Doesn't matter what they are. I'm going to take this little wishbone shaped thing that's holding the gas cap in. And you gently push it towards the other side. It slides right out. You just push one of these edges towards the other one. Gas cap will come off. And we're going to get rid of this old gas. Pretty milky, nasty looking. A thing that just fell off. That's one thing you got to be careful of and watch for. That's what holds the screws that hold the uh, top part of the chainsaw in place. That fuel looks nasty. Almost looks like somebody put bar and chain oil in there. It's another reason why we are getting rid of the getting rid of the carburetor. This is a project I had quite some some years back and ended up just stuffing it away in the storage trailer and kind of forgot about it. So those little pins, those little pieces that that fell out. Let's see, let's make sure we're still focused in here, folks. Those little pieces that fell out. Those are actually what the screws screw into to hold the cover in place. These guys and over time, they get, it's a spring steel, and the spring just kind of gets sprung and opens up. Just take a pair of pliers and gently squish them back down a little bit again until they're nearly touching, and then clip them back into place. It's back in place. There's another one that fell off earlier. I'm going to do the same thing, swish it down a little bit. Don't want to smoosh it down real hard because they will crack. I've done it before. And then just push it back into place where it came from. This one looks like it'll stay. Alright, let's get on to replacing this fuel line. What you're going to want to replace this fuel line with is a pair of Needle loose pliers. And get in there. And grip. Pull this guy up into place here. So there's your old fuel filter. Again, the kit came with a new fuel filter. What we're going to do is just pull on the fuel line after we cut it. Let me cut it real quick. And actually go the opposite direction. Cut this guy here at the fuel filter. Pull this up and out. That's going to be easier up and out than the other way because this fuel line on the bottom side is real soft from being soaked in fuel all the time. And this is more hard and it's not going to move down quite as easy. So we're going to go ahead and install the new fuel filter and fuel line. Okay. Fuel line, and you take something to cut it with. You cut it at an angle. You can use scissors, you can use a pair of pliers, a pair of wire cutters. Well, what you're wanting is a really steep ramp. You can see that there. And you push that down and through. Makes it easier for the fuel line to pass through. Looking inside the fuel tank here, for it to come through. 
Looks like I might need to cut that back a little bit more. After you're done snipping that back a little bit further, we'll try again. I can see it now. Whether or not I can grab it with the needle nose. Yep. Let's get up here. You can see that fuel line coming through. You only end up losing a little bit of fuel line when you do this. But it is absolutely worth it to lose that little bit to make this a thousand times easier. Don't need to go crazy with pulling on it. Just pull on it with a constant force. Okay, that should be good enough now. Should have enough length on it here. Before I put that new fuel filter on though, I'm gonna put the new carburetor in place. All right, next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and get the carburetor all set up here. So I'm gonna take the air filter box apart. This one screws together instead of pressing together like the old one. So, I'm going to go ahead and put the screws through it to kind of help hold it in place. Let's see, let me get the camera focused in here to show you this next part. Alright, getting a little closer here. The choke side clips into the little white tab. So, and kind of rotates up into place, goes into that little slot right there. The other side, the throttle side, goes into the little slot down here. As you can see, there's a little slot right there. That guy goes into there. It's hard to do. <laughs> holding it this way. It's hard to visualize because I'm holding it funny. It goes like this. Just like that. Yep. Goes just like that. Then that piece goes into a slot on the chainsaw. That slot is right here, right near the fuel line actually. Put that right there. Try to push it out of the way. There's a little slot right here. It lines up with this guy. And that slot, that piece goes right into the slot like that. Really, really hard to show. Once that goes into place, everything kind of rotates and goes where it's supposed to. So fuel line needs to, needs to go up a little more. It needs to actually go underneath. There's a little clip that holds it right there. That guy goes around and plugs into the carburetor. Pull that back a little bit. There's kind of a nice 45 degree or 90 degree. And then it goes back into place. Like so. As you're assembling this, don't forget, <laughs> I nearly did, don't forget the new gasket for the carburetor. There's a hole on the carburetor. I'll show you here in a second with the old carb, but it will line up. 
with the hole in the gasket. That is for the pulse pump to actually pump the fuel into the carburetor. If that's not lined up, it will not pump fuel to the carburetor and it will not run. Not well or not for long anyways. It might start and shut off, start and shut off. And your guess gets in place. Here's the old carburetor. It's got a tiny little hole right there. That needs to line up with the gasket. Like that. Go ahead and get these screws tightened down. They don't need to be crazy tight, but they definitely need to be snugged down. I'm sure there's a torque spec or something out there for them somewhere. Don't go crazy. Especially with the ones that mount the carburetor up. Those go into plastic and they'll strip out if you go too tight with them. Alright, those are all tight. Go ahead and check function of everything. The uh, choke cancel works. Throttle works correctly. I can look down on the inside and see the choke open and close. And the throttle open and close. So that's all done. New carburetor's put on. We're going to go ahead and pull this fuel line through a little bit further. To suck it down a little bit more. Right there. Just below, there's a lip here. Just below that lip. That's where I've pulled the fuel line through. Gonna go ahead and put the new air filter on here. Screw it down. That's the new carburetor installed. Let's go ahead and install the new spark plug. For that we're gonna need a spark plug wrench. Or a socket. Let's go. Is that the right size? I think it is. It's three quarter. Can also put on the new spark plug. That is the right one. Now you don't always have to install new spark plugs. We can inspect the old spark plug, make sure it's good or bad. And that spark plug is actually just fine. If you're looking at that center electrode. There's the outer and the inner. That inner needs to be nice and square, just like you see. If it's rounded, or that electrode is actually down a ways you can see it's been worn it just needs to be replaced that spark plugs just fine it's a quality NGK uh, if your spark plug is worn out it, the kit comes with one it's really good to keep this with you while you're running just in case you need one out in the field if it fouls out that is a thing that they can do too the spark plug is going to look just fine but just stop sparking. They foul out. You just need to put a new spark plug in. So I'm going to save this for later. I'm going to go ahead and run the NGK. So yeah. One thing to note as well, if your saw has been sitting a really long time or you're going to put it into storage, one really smart thing to do is to slowly rotate the engine over with your pull string or by hand, that's what I can do here. And you're going to look inside, and you can see the spark or the uh, piston go up and down. You'll want to get it near the top and put some oil in there and slowly rotate it down about that much. That will help protect the engine 
put it into a good storage state so it can sit a very long time without damaging the engine and before you pull it out of storage to use again if you want to is you can do the same thing and put a little bit of oil into that top end again and make sure it has oil before it starts again because two strokes don't have a crankcase that is filled with oil the oil comes from the gas comes from the fuel so it's really important that you know it's got oil it might start up and run just fine but you never know if it's going to go without oil for just a couple seconds or it takes a minute for that oil to spread everywhere and start fully protecting so if you're not actively using the chainsaw I would suggest putting some oil in there for storage or before your first start of the season. Let's go ahead and plug the spark plug back in here. Put the new spark plug that came in the kit with the chainsaw case or with the chainsaw stuff. I'm going to go ahead and cut that end off that we cut at an angle install the new fuel filter here it looks plastic but this is actually like stone and this is what actually does your filtering make sure to get it on just about as far as we can push that guy back in and that looks a lot better okay hard to explain but it just needs to go down to the bottom of the tank and be able to move around a little bit if it's pressed in there so tight that it doesn't want to move, it's going to cause issues in the future. We're going to go ahead and put some fuel in it now. I believe these saws call for a 40 to 1. I won't run anything leaner, even if a saw or two-stroke engine calls for like a 50 to 1. Or even leaner, I've seen. I just don't trust <laughs> that that's enough oil. Called me old-fashioned, but... My favorite uh, mixes are either a 32 to 1 for old chainsaws and old two strokes up to a 40 to 1 for something more modern like this. You can use your favorite two stroke oil, whatever you prefer. There's about half a tank there. I'm using, I think, Lucas or Valvoline two stroke oil stuff that's good for chainsaws, motorcycles, pretty much everything. I'm going to go ahead and put the fuel cap back on here. Tighten that guy down into place. This guy will then drop on. Making sure that choke is in the right position. I don't know what it was, but taking it on and off a couple times, it started fitting into place. Let's take a look at this side. Yep, your high-low mixture screws are accessible on this side. We will be doing a how to tune this, either in this video or a separate video. But next step we're going to do is get that pull string repaired. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get this pull string replaced and repaired. It's drooping a little bit. It happens when springs get a little sprung, some age happens. It still pulls just fine, but we're going to go ahead and replace the pull string itself. It's just getting old. Doesn't hurt while we're in here. Gonna cut the line off. Make sure you guys can see all right here. Yep. Pull it through the casing. We're gonna unwrap it. All right, so that's all the way unwrapped. 
wrapped. We'll pull the knot out of the middle here to pull the, the old pull string out. There we go. So we're going to be using some true blue heavy duty commercial starter rope. This is 8th inch diameter, 1 8th. It's a little skinnier than what the chainsaw had on it. I don't think this is the correct stuff for this chainsaw. And going a little skinnier is actually going to be better for chainsaws. Like I said, I'm not sure what this was, but this is going to be really good stuff for it. What we're going to go ahead and do is try to feed this up and through. What we're going to end up doing is heating this end up with a torch. It's gotten down to 40 degrees with the heater off. <laughs> Hence why my lighters and torches don't like to light. Butane doesn't like these temperatures. So what we're going to do is warm this up. Spin it my fingers, but also give it kind of a bend so it points upwards. That's going to help our case by getting this in and through. Makes it a ton easier. Use a pair of needle nose. Pull it the rest of the way up. Just like that. I'm going to snip that little end off that we made now. And we're going to give this a double knot, but instead of a knot and a knot, you go like this. Just make it over-exaggerated here. So normally you'd stop there and pull, but you're going to work it through one more time. So through the hole twice. It makes for a larger, larger size knot which usually works out really well. This chainsaw may not need it. We'll see if we can fit it. Pull that nice and tight. I need a pair of pliers pulling the string on the top side. I'm gonna cut that back. Singe it off again. Careful, you will burn your fingers working with lighters. <laughs> so just please be careful. And that double knot fits perfect. That should work exactly the way we need it to. All right, so the center of the pull rope is right here, or the spring and everything. And the pull rope is on this side, so it would spin this way as you pull it and then it would retract back in. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to spin this guy clockwise. Just thinking about that real quick. Yes, clockwise. So it's going to spin this way and go that way when you pull on it. So we're going to spin it that way. until it comes to a stop. The light stop there, like it doesn't want to go anymore. Just carefully, okay, see, that's where it wants to stop. And the top part is right there, that's where the knot is. So unscrewing it to there, it will never hyperextend. You wouldn't want to then start this wrap here because if you got to the end you'd end up breaking this spring. And if you want to be extra careful you can let it go one full round like that. Then what you're going to want to do is hold it and let it suck the rope in carefully. It'll take up as much as it wants. It should be about that much. Pulling this out. 
Should be a nice long pull string for a chainsaw. We're going to cut it. Singe it. Pinch it off a little bit there. Pull it up through. Going to do another one of those double knots again. Carefully not letting this rope go. <laughs> one and two. Make sure it's nice and tight. Cut that back again. I guess we didn't need to singe it the last time we did. And it's too cold. There we go. Singe that guy off. And we've got a repaired pull string with a nice long pull. For a chainsaw at least. And it won't hyperextend. If you have these hyperextend, they break those springs pretty easy. So let's go ahead and install this guy. Alright. So we're going to go ahead and get this guy installed. Like I said, that fourth screw is missing. I'm not going to fret over it too much. Oh, one thing to check. These are your poles. See how that's really slow to return? That one's not. These are going to need a little something. You can use WD-40, PB Blaster, favorite type of lubricant, whatever that may be. I'm going to go ahead spray some cleaner on it which is already going to speed it up a lot more. It's going to take some grease out of there. It's almost out. The cleaning is optional. I like to do it. And then I'm going to use some really light Marvel Mystery Oil just to drop. Really just to drop on each. there and that much there. That'll lubricate them but it's nice and light so it's not going to gum them up. And those paws work like they should. They'll actually grab and not break. Now when you're putting this back down, light pressure pulling on the pole rope and it will get it to seat down where it's supposed to be. Grab the three screws that I have left. One on the top here. One here. One there. There we go. That guy is all put back together. The chain. Is a little loose. Okay, a lot loose. So we're gonna go ahead and adjust that guy real quick while we're here. You do not want your chains loose. You don't want them coming off and rearranging your face because they will. They are not a forgiving thing. Chainsaws are a dangerous tool. This has a chain lock on it, which is definitely nice. I probably wouldn't use chainsaws anymore that don't have the chain locks. Just because, again, chainsaws are a dangerous tool. You need to understand the risks of using them before using them. Get the proper um, safety devices. Earmuffs. Get yourself a pair of chaps chainsaw jacket if you want to go that far it's all it takes is a split second and they can really ruin some lives I have somebody in my own family that we almost lost to a chainsaw all right where's the adjustment screw on this guy There's got to be an adjustment screw. Oh, it's on that side. 
It's on the bottom side of the jing. You'll twist the adjustment screw and the chain tightened up nicely right there. I also don't want it too tight. I usually will try to move it by hand. It's feeling pretty good there. Not too tight, not too loose. I don't know why I'm using the long ratchet. You don't want to go crazy on tightening these things down either. snap off and these bolts and nuts are always used loosened and tightened all the time so you over tighten these a couple times and they're done so we are done with that guys new carburetor new air filter all that kits put on got a new pull string here you can hear that oil that I've got in the top end there's the kill switch that's the on and run position. We'll choke it up here and let's see if we can get it to start. I'm going to have to sit this on the ground, I think. Definitely has nice, strong spark. So fiddling around with this, trying to get it started, it would not start. So I decided to pull the exhaust off. This is the side of the piston that's always the most damaged. This is probably the most damaged piston I think I've ever seen. You can see the scratch marks directly through the piston rings. Like that's gone. <laughs> no wonder this engine wouldn't start. You can see the, the compression leaking out right there. As it's going up, watch the bubbles. Right along the top of the frame. See the bubbles? Yeah. Donezo. Donezo. Yeah. So, we are going to need to get a new cylinder for this to get this thing running again. That's surprising. But, I think we're going to do it. We're going to go ahead and go buy a new cylinder for that. Get this thing fixed. I thought it might have been a blockage in the exhaust. But it looked pretty okay in there. Usually it's that screen right there that gets blocked up. And you can clean that up by hitting it with a torch for a little bit. Burning up all the carbon. But, no, no, it's, uh, that engine's toast. So... Let me see what we can find as far as uh, maybe performance parts for this thing.